Hello everyone, this is Diego from Brunner. Today I'm going to explain to you how to configure the forces of your Brunner yoke or rudder. The first thing to know is that forces are governed by two basic principles. The first principle is force by deflection, which is the curve we're seeing here. So if I move my yoke around a little bit, you can see this orange dot moving about, which shows the current position and force of your yoke. In this case, the roll axis. Now, if you observe the position of the roll axis and the position of the orange dot, you can see that this, this diagram is mirrored. So forces are always the same for both directions of roll and the forces are defined from the center position to either end of the axis. Now in this display you also see two lines. You have a blue line and you have an orange dotted line. Um, it's only dotted in since version 3.22. Before it was um, a solid line. Um, the blue line shows your force profile that is defined by these nine values here, which you can show as engineering units or internal units. And the orange line is the blue line scaled by a percentage value. This percentage value can be read here. It's called force scale factor and is now at 20. So it's scaled to 20%, which we can see here. Now, if I activate hydraulics and by uh, clicking on this checkbox and set the force to 100% and click on apply, you can see that the force is now, the lines are now exactly on top of each other. So in the older CLS to sim versions, you would only see the orange line. So if you don't see the blue line, don't sweat it. It's just below the orange line. Okay, so we have forces defined by deflection and they get scaled by a scale factor, by a force scale factor, which is now 20 as we are standing on the runway with airspeed of zero and I've deactivated hydraulics. Theoretically, the force scale factor would now be zero, but 20 is the absolute minimum. It will never go below that value. Now I want to adjust the force by airspeed. So I can go to force factor. Um, this force factor is not the same value as this force scale factor. So it's not the value we use to scale the curve, but it's um, a value we use in this calculation here. So I get airspeed from the simulation. I divide that airspeed by the factor I have set here, and then I raise the result by the power to the power of two. This gets me the scale factor then, which is used to scale the curve. Uh, you can also uh, change this value to a dynamic one by setting a profile and changing it like here, um, but it's very indirect. It's not clear. Uh, what scaling you get at what speed you have to change, you have to calculate and stuff, it's not nice. So we have a new system now. Um, CLS to Sim 3.22 now has a new force system which you can activate here. Why? And now we have here force scale factor, and now it's the exact same value. So here we can define forces by speed, force scaling by speed. You have the minimum value 20, the maximum value 999, and you can define exactly what is what scaling you want at which speed. So you can make something like this. And as we stand on the runway, we have now a scale factor of 210. So if I press apply now, you have 209, so yeah, there's some rounding error, but it's it's the same value. So now I can, we can now directly define 
force scaling, the scaling of our force curve by speed. Um, if you have an old profile and you install CLSSIM 3.22, the old profile should get um, converted to the new one. That means if you activate this new force system, you should already have a custom curve defined for you with 10 points. Um, the old force system is now deprecated. So take care to change to the new one. And yeah, that's about it. These are the two principles to define force. There are many other force settings uh, like a minimum scale factor and an initial scale factor. Um, some of those are now obsolete. A minimum scale factor was used to set a minimum force scale factor. So if I want to, my curve to not go um, uh, below a scaling of 100, I can say 100 here. And this would be the absolute minimum. But now as we have a diagram here, which we can set force with, we can freely define our minimum point and we don't need the other value here. The initial scale factor is the force scale factor that will be written to the yoke, or rather when you did not yet connect to the simulation. So if I connect the hardware side, I can decide to already write a force scale factor of, factor of 100 so that the yoke moves to its middle position before I connect to the simulation. Now, this should be about it for the forces. A small thing to note is that move back defines if the yoke or if the axis should try to move to the middle position or the position defined by trim or not, in which case it's just passive and uh, staying where it is. Or, and if you have profile mode disabled, you can just set one force and the curve is always flat. So that should be about it. If you have any questions, uh, if things are unclear, um, just write us an email. Um, this is the first video uh, that explains the stuff, so bear with us a little. Uh, if it's still not perfect, we will try to improve this over time. Thanks for listening and uh, have a nice time flying. Bye.